isn't it awesome? Here's some more. Killing Floor 2 had an update called the Descent Content Pack that added new maps, new weapons and a trophy update to the PlayStation version of the game. All for free, of course. I spent a lot of time playing the original Killing Floor and I played the beta version of Killing Floor 2 a while ago, so I was very curious to see what happened to the game. This update gave me the perfect opportunity to shoot some Zeds in the face and make a video about it. I gotta say, playing this game feels amazing. The guns are so much fun to use and they remind me of the time I started playing the first game. Back then I had very little experience playing first person shooters and it felt like I was in a very sick version of heaven. This time, even with plenty of experience, it keeps being fun and fresh, like the blood and guts of the Zed bastards, you can almost smell it. In case you are unfamiliar with Killing Floor 2, or you simply forgot how it works, I'd like to quickly explain what the game is about and how it works, and then we'll take a look at the Descent update. Killing Floor 2 is a multiplayer first-person wave shooter that allows you to play using one of several different classes. Each class has specific perks and weapons that can basically specialize your role in the team. As you use the class weapons, you gain experience and levels. The levels are tied to both special skills and perks within the class. Every 5 levels you have the option to choose between two skills and I haven't played enough to determine are they balanced, but I do know that the higher the level, the more death you will bring. The game can be played on both official and custom maps and currently it is only possible to play survival mode. The classic survival mode features up to 6 players surviving waves of AI enemies while the survival versus has 6 humans on the other side to spice things up a bit. I think that covers the basics, so now we can take a look at the Descent update. The new map that shares the name of the update itself adds a small but significant game mode within the map. After each wave you drop through a hole and descend into a different, random map. It is a very dynamic system that will likely confuse new players and cause a lot of failures, but that is the beauty of this game. Failing merely fuels the body for more. More pain and suffering through the death of acid spewing, chainsaw wielding and fire shooting Zeds. The chaos that this new map brings is definitely refreshing because you can't plan anything. Every wave is a game of its own and if you aren't experienced you'll constantly be panicking, wondering is there a bastard behind your back ready to strike you up the butt. Being stricken up the butt can be remedied by using the new flaming weapon, the Spitfire. I love this fucking thing in the original game and in Killing Floor 2 it is just beyond awesome. You can get the single Spitfire and then later upgrade it into a dual wielding monster of carnage. If you don't have any upgrades the single magazine has 6 bullets which means you need to reload quite often and it being a revolver, reloading can get you killed. Luckily you don't need to give a fuck because the accuracy and damage that this weapon outputs is crazy. The satisfaction that it brings when used makes you completely forget if a Zed strikes you up the butt. It simply becomes irrelevant because you know you will spit fire into his face eventually. Thanks to this weapon Firebug is easily my favorite class right now and I will work towards increasing my level so I can unlock skills that will allow me to either get more ammo or reduce reload speed of this weapon so I can continue spitting fire all over the place. The second weapon that has been added to the game is the Stoner 63A light machine gun. It belongs to the commando class that already has a ton of specialized weapons so if this is the class of your choice you'll probably have even more trouble deciding which one to go with in each wave. I'm not very familiar with technical details when it comes to guns, so I don't know is it correctly represented compared to the real life version, but it is very satisfying to use, as is pretty much every other weapon in the game. The satisfaction that the shooting brings is my biggest problem in this game, the magazine runs out of bullets so quickly and then the reloading takes forever. I'm fairly certain every class lets you get upgrades to lessen this problem, but man, at start it's painful. The stoner is a reasonably strong weapon with good recoil but very, very long reload time so you'll probably want to be careful and use proper timing so you don't end up reloading while receiving strikes up your butt. I'm disappointed in myself that I ignored Killing Floor 2 for so long because it is clear that this is the best wave shooter on the market right now. It's incredibly satisfying and the variety of classes, skills, maps and enemies can keep a person playing for months. 
If you wanna take it up a notch, you can organize a team and battle the Zeds on the Hell on Earth difficulty, which is designed for experienced players willing to play using actual tactics and planning, rather than just shooting random asset spewers. You will be able to play it for free this weekend on Steam, and I would definitely recommend it. If you end up disappointed, I grant you the right to slap me across the face using a fly swatter. If you end up liking it, consider getting the game over my humble bundle link to support the channel and maybe visit my website for some additional content, I did some improvements lately. Thanks for watching and make sure to stay around to witness a glorious display of murder in one of my recent matches. I have been Petard, your glorious lord, and may the blessings of Petardia eternally touch your butt.
much better now. <laughs> <laughs> 